John Heilman. And I'm Mark Halpern. With all due respect to the nation's late night hosts, it'll be impossible to fill David Letterman's shoes or his famous worldwide pants. <laughs>
within the Clinton world, one of the things that's amazing about the two of them is that they're both controversial. Even people who like the Clintons sometimes worry about the influence of both of them, for different reason, worry about the influence of both of them on Bill and Hillary Clinton, and they've always been controversial for that Here's reason. Here's the danger for them and for Secretary Clinton. If the journal story about Cheryl Mills is right today, if the New York Times story is right about Sid Blumenthal, and they both seem to be solidly reported stories, even Democrats, and including a lot of Obama Democrats, look at what they have are alleged to have done, and they don't approve of it. They, even in these partisan times where it's normally to the mattresses for your own side, a lot of Democrats look at the actions alleged in those stories and say, you know what, they shouldn't have done that. Well, and these are the kinds of, the kinds of people and the kinds of things that the Obama people always, rightly or wrongly, held themselves as being kind of morally superior to. And there's those old wounds that have always been there. The, these kind of people being uh, br dragged into the spotlight uh, will exacerbate some of that sniping that goes on within the party that will not be helpful to her politically going forward. I bet you what's going on in the minds of the younger people working in Brooklyn for Hillary Clinton now, who are familiar with history, yes. is if you're associated with Hillary Clinton, you can get dragged into stuff. Potential danger for her as that campaign tries to get off the ground. All right. We're going to have even more on Hillary Clinton in just a moment when we look at our Iowa focus group after the break. But before that break, everyone we know is going to tonight be watching David Letterman's last show on CBS. John, after Letterman leaves, who is best positioned to get to have the couch on which prominent politicians come and sit? Well, and not just because he's going to be in the Ed Sullivan Theater. I think it's Stephen Colbert. Obviously, he's the guy who has the, the political background, has interviewed a lot of politicians in the past, also has uh, Letterman's penchant for irony and for some degree of substance and serious talk. I think Colbert's a bit of a wild card because we don't know exactly how he's going to host the show. He's not going to be in when, character. When he's Stephen Colbert. I think Jimmy. Yeah. You know which Jimmy I mean. I, I don't. Fallon. I think, those, I, think Fallon, <laughs> I think Fallon has assumed more of the Leno role, yeah. which is safe, not edgy, yes. a place you can go and, and show your best side. So I think he's probably going to end up getting more folks uh, at Rock Center than, uh, than people are going to get at the Ed Sullivan Theater. That's my guess. Okay. All right. Coming up, our very revealing focus group in Iowa and what they really think about Hillary Clinton. We'll be right back. Our guest tonight is 10 guests tonight, all of them Iowa Democrats. John and I went to the Hawkeye State this week to talk to what Hillary Clinton calls everyday Americans. We went to Drake University, loved the Drake, and did a pair of focus groups with voters along with our partners from Purple Strategies. Tonight, the Democratic session, we asked them about the controversies that surround Hillary Clinton, what they think is the one thing that might stop her path to the nomination in the White House, and how they feel about her. You know, I'd say she's a very ambitious person obviously and um, she wants to be president she feels that she is supposed to be president I think she's felt like that for a long time you know I think obviously to run for president you have to be pretty egotistical already Bill what are your initial impressions um, there's definitely some trust issues there but like everybody else has said her record pretty much speaks for itself she's eminently qualified to run this country and I think she'd probably do a pretty good job Bill, what's the single thing you like most about her? Her experience, especially in foreign policy and being Secretary of State. I think that's going to be a real key, key problem in the next four years. What did she accomplish that you consider significant as Secretary of State? I really can't name anything off the top of my head. Okay, Marlene, how about you? Hey, like, give me a minute. <laughs> give me two minutes to go someplace else. <laughs> Christina, can you think of something that she accomplished as Secretary of State that impressed you or thinks important? Um... No. Amanda, anything you'd point to to say this is a good credential for... I honestly present? can't say I followed along everything that was going on all that well. Okay, Theta? I think she would do an excellent job. Yeah. What do you think of her personally? Personally? She's a better woman than I am. <laughs> <laughs> she survived the Monica Lewinsky scandal, among many other things that that they've been through over the years with all the different things that, like her emails recently even, you know, and... You know, her, her experience, um, Bill Clinton had a lot of good policies, and, you know, they stayed, you know, married. They have to have had something in common to, to make it through everything that happened. Charlie said he didn't think there'd be a... Hillary Clinton would have a scandal because she's so smart. Um, some of the scandals in the Clintons' lives have been called not, caused not by Hillary Clinton, but by Bill Clinton. Mm -hmm. Bill, I'll ask you, your namesake, 
How concerned are you, as someone who wants to see her elected president, how concerned are you that a scandal involving Bill Clinton could come out and hurt her chances of winning? Uh, I I don't think that's going to be too much of an issue. He's a pretty savvy guy, even though, well, of course, with the Monica thing, he did get caught in the past. But um, Kendra, is there any concern you have that Bill Clinton could cause a problem for her? Yeah. Um, I say watching my favorite show, Scandal, going by what they do there, I, I think he will play a big part. I think they will try to attack him because people will see them as one. They won't see Hillary and Bill. They will see the Clintons. Yeah. So I think they will... Like we said, Hillary, she's more laid back to herself, and Bill is a little more out there, so I think they will try to attack him more to get to her. Amanda, do you think a Bill Clinton scandal could be a problem for Hillary? If, if, if he, you know, they, they might be able to dig something up and then they'll use it. <laughs> All it takes is one missaid thing here, there, a word in the wrong place, and there's a huge scandal about something. or and. It's all blown out of proportion. <laughs> yeah. Look at the scandal. His, the scandal he survived, though. I mean, yeah. um, you get over, you know, cheating on your wife in the Oval Office, yeah. literally. Like, yeah. I mean, his popularity soared after he was impeached. So, Ryan, if I understand John correctly, he's saying there's no scandal too big for Bill Clinton to overcome. <laughs> I actually don't see. I actually don't. I I actually think Bill Clinton would actually, you know, support his wife. But I really don't actually see a Bill Clinton scandal until her, her until her second term, because then you'd be like, don't matter, second term, come at me, bro. You know, <laughs> have that whole attitude. You know. So she seemed like a different person to you, or the same person? She's not running against an unbeatable candidate this time. Well, that's you know? true. <laughs> like, like, who had any doubt that Obama was going to get the nomination and go on? I mean. It was just a phenomenal campaign he ran, and, you know, even though she was probably the first woman to stand a chance at getting elected during that, I mean, it's, it just, you know, his oratorical skills, his, um, the way he made people charisma, feel, yeah. charisma, you know. Um, so I think she's a lot less, uh, she's a lot more comfortable in this campaign. Last time she ran, she ran with an air of inevitability. And that put off a lot of people. I think she's less abrasive now. Last time she was running for the nomination. This time she's running for president. I think that's a good way of saying it. It's yeah. like she's yeah. going against, you know, she's just, she's not going against anybody else right now. She's just being herself and like just basically stating what she's going to do, what she intends to do. She is uh, getting my support. She's moved to the left on a couple issues I really care about. I think if she would, um, I think with time, you know, we need to see what her, her stances are going to be on a few issues because it, it's still not out there on some issues. It's been a while since she's actually, uh, you know, voted on a bill. Um, but, I, I, I mean, she does have us excited. She, does have, she has a lot of people my age excited. I know that. And she's doing a lot of organizing that she learned from Obama in terms of uh, digital organizing, using social media and using, um, you know, using different channels to... Uh, drum up enthusiasm. Kendra, what, what's the single thing you like most about her? To put it short, in my terms, she's a bad mamma jamma. <laughs> she, I mean, she's, she's a strong, confident woman. She knows what she's doing. She's not afraid to step up. She's not afraid to take advice, and she's not afraid to say, no, I don't want to do it that way. I'm going to do it this way. Does do other people like the fact that she's tough? That's my paraphrase for bad mammy Jim. She can stand up. Do other people like that? Right, Boys yeah. Club. She's very capable of being the first female president. Christina, what's the thing about her you don't like? I don't think there's really anything. Um, I don't think there's really anything. I mean, why did she actually come out and actually really talk more about Benghazi? I mean, she completely hid behind it and just didn't discuss it. And I'm, I would really like to see the next president actually be more forthright and actually be more outspoken and been like, listen, we made a mistake, this is where we went wrong, and just completely own it. But we don't have politicians like that anymore. What's the thing that gives you the most concern about her as a potential candidate for your Democratic Party or as a potential president? I guess it would be her honesty. Uh, like you were talking about Benghazi, this whole email thing that she supposedly deleted the emails. And, um, she's just a very closed, quiet, closeted person, and I think that's probably one of her downsides. There are some questions about her, but I think most of the questions of um, honesty and uh, stuff are overblown. 
um, a lot of them, in fact, is made that, oh, she's so ambitious. Well, you know what? If you're going to be a politician, if you're going to set yourself out to be elected to any office, you have to be ambitious. You have to have one big ego. And if you're going for the higher offices, you've got to have an absolutely huge ego. And sometimes that rubs people the wrong way. So one thing that some people have expressed concern about her for, including within the Democratic Party, is her ties to Wall Street. Are any of you concerned about that? No. No. Well, name one candidate that doesn't have ties to Wall Street. Oh, they probably they Sanders. Have ties to something. But, you know, how can you get anywhere without having at least some ties to Wall Street or the business community? Charlie, the, it was reported the other day, you may have heard that the Clintons, Bill and Hillary Clinton together, have made $30 million in speaking fees, some from overseas interests. Does that trouble you at all? No, it doesn't. Uh, it, it doesn't. I mean, they, uh, of course they have. I mean, he's, a, he's an ex-president. I mean, they, you know, they make a lot of money. So do the Bushes. So do a lot of politicians. Would I feel a little bit more comfortable if they, you know, had more common person's experience? You know, yes, I would. But is it, is it in the top 30 of issues that I care about? No, it's really not that important to me. I mean, it seems pretty silly to me that she thought, you know, using a Gmail account was acceptable for diplomatic related stuff, but um, really, I don't care. I mean, I've got emails that I don't want people reading, not because they're, pro you know, there's bad stuff in there, but, you know, that's my personal stuff. If, if something stops Hillary Clinton from being president, what will it be? Um, probably some scandal that, that somebody tries to drum up. Um, but I really don't see what else they can do. Okay, Bill, what, what would stop her? I don't see anything stopping her. They've been having her with Benghazi and this emails and everything, and everything's just washing right off. But is there back. something else you think, would, if she's not elected? It may be what another scandal, be? yeah, if, if that's possible. She's not perfect, um, but she's been in the eye for a long time, in the public's eye, and, and you're going to have some stuff on her. But, you know, she has great policies, and she knows how to get stuff done. All interesting. And tomorrow, our Republican focus group will be right back, though, with a Republican sitting right here, our friend Mary Madeline, after the break. Joining us now is Mary Madeline. Mary, as a serpent-headed man, you know well would say. What's going on? <laughs> What's going on? What's going on? Um, we just uh, showed these, uh, this, this, this a long uh, chunk of video from this focus group we did. I know you heard a little bit about that. Uh, there's all on the Democratic side. Um, as a political strategist, as a Republican, looking at that focus group, what do you take away from it? I thought it was interesting. There is a great grasp of process and personality, but no substance. The only substance raised, only issues raised, were uh, Benghazi and email, and then the character issue of trust. So they all love her and they think she's great, but compared to what? In the land of the blind, she is the one-eyed giant. That's like, we're just talking about our daughter. I always say to my first daughter, you're my favorite first daughter. <laughs> she's compared to what? So without anything to run against, we're going to have another campaign of personality here. And this is a campaign that's going to be a cycle of process, not process, but of policies. Strong candidates, strong Republican candidates would say, what's mine is mine and what's yours we negotiate over. Where is she vulnerable for a Republican trying to win over Democratic votes? What issues is she vulnerable on to try to poach some Democratic votes if you're a Republican nominee? Well, she's the smartest woman in the world, but n nobody in that focus group, and those were clearly political junkies, could name a smart thing that she'd done. Not one single accomplishment. I will say again, why the Republican field is so strong this year and it is because it's running on policy and philosophy, which have been has been absent in the last several cycles. We haven't run on anything. And I love that she's running left because the Republican Party's problem has been they've been going in tandem with the Democrats. So the Democrats have been moving left and we've been moving left. So now we will have a very stark contrast. So where can she lose Democrats as she moves left? Because those policies, if you look at support, or more precisely, uh, 
objection to the policies in the Obama era. The numbers are against the policies, and the policies are affecting their life. We just have to stay on policy. But you, have, but you have a bunch of Democrats here who, as you just said, Mary, can't name any of her accomplishments at the State Department, um, think that she might become embroiled in another scandal, and yet they almost, to a person, would say, um, I'm for her, not just because she's smarter, because I love her, but because we must stop any Republican from becoming president of the United States. So what is a Republican in that circumstance where there's so many Democrats whose attitude is, I'll vote for anybody that will stop Scott Walker, Marco Rubio, Ted Cruz from becoming president. What does a Republican have to there, do to allay those fears? There's not enough of them. What Republicans have to do is what they've failed to do for the past several cycles, which is say, which is to employ that exact strategy. The strategy for victory was predicated on people voting against the opponent. That's a very weak specious strategy. So what they had to do is, in the case of the governors who have records, speak to them, as in Walker's case, Jeb's case. In the, in the case of having a deep constitutional foundation, Cruz or Rand, or that, they have to speak to that. They have been speaking to it. And frankly, they have to not answer the kinds of questions that typically come up in a political arena, but say what they have to say. And so far, they've been good. So we have to just be who we are, which we haven't been. And if she just is what she's been, she, she will get what she's got and no more. Jeb Bush was up in New Hampshire today still talking about his family, his father and his brother, both of whom you know well. Clearly still a lot of concern in Bush world about how he deals with the family issue. What are the elements of effectively dealing with it? I have to say I'm surprised that the dynasty issue is as deep as it is. I think it has as much to do with the frustration of Republicans not being running as conservatives, not giving a clarion call for free markets and everything else that we stand for. But the only thing, the best thing for Jeb to do is the only thing he can do, which is to keep being out there. They think they know Jeb. The, the larger electorate doesn't know Jeb any more than they knew W. Jeb is different from George W. George W. is very different from H.W. We know them all, worked for all of them. And they're completely different people with different records, different temperaments, different philosophies. There's not, there's not a single person, Republican or Democrat, who thinks that Jeb handled the Iraq question last week well. Took him a number of different times. He changed his position throughout the course of the week. Forgetting about the substance of it, like where he how he should have answered, how can it be that he it took him that long to come down where he came down? What what is the nature of the trouble he has answering that question? It's it's it is curious. You're right. I, I the party in general is in a transition from robust international intervention in perpetuity and what we used to be, which what is our strategic interest. And I think this goes to the, his response goes to the former question. There's too much, too much emotional uh, internalization of the Bush question, and there's loyalty in the family and all the rest of it. But he can't. Okay, that, that was way too short. Thank you for coming, Mary. We'll be right back with a Rand Paul time lapse. Rand Paul making a filibuster-ish speech about the Patriot Act renewal today. He spoke for about the length of a baseball game. How unpatriotic, just speaking literally. Tomorrow, part two of our focus group, we hear from the Republicans in Iowa about the, their big field. And Hillary Clinton, remember, this program is on at 5 and at 8 and at 11. Until tomorrow, sayonara. Over and over again.